So this is my green and null setup. Now, I actually broke a rather important rule, but with good reasoning. These guys are wild caught and probably parasite burdened, but, oh, sorry guys. I went straight ahead with a full bioactive. And let me tell you why. Now, one of the girls is really gravid, like eggs dropping soon. So I wanted these guys to have a really natural setup so that they feel a bit more comfortable and they acclimate a little bit better in captivity with something a bit more wild-like, something they should be more comfortable with. And I wanted her to have like all the options ever to go lay those eggs. And she could be like churning them out every seven days. So I don't really want to make the mistake of stressing her out and causing her to reabsorb or have problems. So I know they're going to be parasite burdened, but I think it's much more important to get them established, get them comfortable, get them eating, get them maintaining weight, and then I can start slipping them some drugs if I feel like it. So for the substrate, I've just dumped some soil into there. Something like Zoomed Reptisoil will be good. I then went outside and got a load of branches off my bush, cut that back, brought in a load of branches, dug them into the substrate, plonked them in, made it look really thick and bushy. I took this branch here and I've, uh, Dug it down to the substrate and it's standing up there nicely. It's now the basking spot for the basking spot there. The male likes to sit here and let the girls know this is his territory and he'll head bob and he'll display to them in this prime position. Now, because they're wild caught, I really don't want to stress them. So what I've done is I've chucked a bunch of food in. At this sort of littoral level, I've chucked in crickets, waxworms, earthworms, and I've chucked in pieces of carrot so that the crickets should be gut loading whilst they're in the enclosure running around to maintain their sort of like carotenoid content so that they can hunt as they please without my interference. I just want them to have a really, really laid back existence without too much of me poking and prodding and getting in their way. I have got a small water bowl that's there as a last resort for them. But I'm just gonna give them their morning spray, maintain humidity and give them that drinking water that they need. Help the plants settle in, the seedlings I've got down here. And just give them something to drink from. I'm not gonna go crazy and upset them by spraying them directly. Just, just, just a little bit of water for them. There we go. I can't even see to the back of this setup and that is perfect and give them that security that I think they need to settle in. I'm also putting in some seeds. I've got some cress seeds here and some water cress. Things that are going to bubble up and look like undergrowth shoots that one, the crickets are going to feed on and the earthworms are going to eat. But also it's going to help with the cycle of nitrogen in the setup and all this like, and all this dead decaying mulch down here. It's only going to help with the ice pods that are in here, the springtails, the earthworms. The earthworms are going to come up from the soil, take some leaves down, make their bedding and their nests down the soil, and basically look after the nitrogen cycle in this setup. In here, like right here, I have some pothos planted. So when eventually these branches that I've cut off and chucked in here, all the leaves die and drop off, they'll come to the bottom and be a part of that littoral mulch layer that then breaks down and becomes soil. And the pothos will climb up, up the background, up these sticks and take their place. Inside this, if I can touch it, I've got a halogen lamp and then an LED spotlight for UVA vision. What that's gonna do is give them the UVA for their vision, for them to see white light. It's gonna make them see colors that they only saw in the wild before they were captured. It's all directing onto this nice branch here for the prime basking spot. I've also got an LED UV here. Now I'm experimenting with this. This has got UVA in it as well, which is great for vision. So this is the first time that these guys would have seen natural colors apart from when they were actually like in America. So what's gonna happen is when the sun hits this, excuse the mess, I made a mess setting this up. When the sun hits, it's gonna hit that back pane of glass where that background is. And I've seen the females basking and pressing their gravity bellies against the background. It's so cool. So they're getting all this natural sun come in here and create a basking spot along these branches. Now in the summer, that might create a problem with temperatures, but I'm just gonna, 
you know, slide it along into this corner so it's out of the way of the sun so much. But so far, these guys are doing really, really well. Now these guys are being really shy and I haven't noticed them like feed in front of me. But I have noticed that there is some like poop here on the leaves and I have seen a girl with a cricket's leg hanging out of her mouth. So I know they are eating. I've just not seen them hunt personally. It doesn't take a lot to make something like this. I'm literally just taking sticks and branches out the garden and just digging them into the mud that I chucked in the bottom. It's really simple and then chuck some leaves that were under the same bush and just chucked them in the bottom here. And there was like wood lice in here, ice pods already in the stuff that I grabbed. Um, I'm, I'm not so concerned about parasites because I know they're wild caught and I think actually it's the lizards that will contaminate the substrate and, and the stuff that I got from outside rather than the stuff from outside contaminating the lizards. But again, I'm doing it for stress reasons and then moving forward, I can then take babies out and put them in their own enclosures and then treat them and then I'll get to a position where I've got a lineage of greener knolls without parasite problems. But to begin with, to acclimate them and give them a real slow start, this is what I'm doing. And because it's in my bedroom and it looks really cool, I'm enjoying this planted setup. The reason this looks so natural and it looks so good is because it's all one bush and even this, the leaf litter they got from outside was literally under that bush. So the reason it looks so uniform and so natural is because it literally is all from the same bush. That's why it looks so natural and like you can't really replicate it because it literally is leaf litter and different cycles of growth from one plant and that's why it looks like that in the setup because it literally is. Of course this is going to change as things die off and the pothos takes over but for now I think it looks rather beautiful. The other problem that I'm going to have is how am I going to collect the eggs from in this mess? Well if she decides to lay at the back then I'm probably not going to collect them. I'm going to hope that they hatch out and I can see the baby green now and grab it and take it out. Or if the adults eat it in that time before I get to it, then they eat it. But I know they like to like dig and lay their eggs around the base of like plants and stuff. So I'm hoping that she might choose right at this front because it's really sticky and there's loads of big roots at the base here. That she might dig a little spot right down here or even just over here. I'm really hoping that she'll do that and not somewhere at the back. And what, if it's at the front, if she chooses the front here, I'll be able to collect the eggs really easy without letting them hatch out on the setup. If she doesn't, then uh, I just gotta see if I can grab some before before the male decides that he might want to eat them. No one really breeds green anoles in the UK. So to you Americans, it's like, wow, a green anole. But to us, even though they come in cheap, no one bothers. So no one bothers to make captive bred green anoles in the UK. So I'm quite excited by them. And plus when he was sat here like doing his flap and like displaying, they're so cool. I don't understand why they're throwaway to you Americans because they're amazing. They're like a hybrid between a gecko and a chameleon. And they're really affordable and really easy and cheap for you to get access to. So why do people not love them more? All of this I set up for free. Straight out the front of my yard, went and grabbed it, chucked it in some soil, bang, done. I don't understand why. You could have an amazing setup like this. Amazing, beautiful setup with these anoles, these beautiful like color changing lizards that have a flap of skin, this flash of pink that bob and do. They bob up and down at each other and move around and like are amazing display. And then no one cares. I don't get it. But anyway, Enough of me like gushing over green and owls. Hopefully this gives you some ideas for a setup that you could do and I'll see you in the next video.